Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Cytosis, which is a very fast playing, charming little worker placement game that does exactly what it sets out to do, which is present the inner workings of, you know, the just one of the billions and billions of cells that make up our bodies and you know gives you an idea for the kind of stuff that's going on. I mean it's obviously it's a simplified streamlined version but it's still just um, it, it's it's absolutely lovely how it kind of opens our eyes to something we just take for granted that's working on such an insane scale every second of every day inside our body. So um, the theme is phenomenal. It's incredibly enticing and engaging. And I gotta say, I feel smarter having played this game. Uh, it's interesting. I mean, I've got a prototype. I didn't mention right up front. Everything you're seeing here is prototypes. You can go check out the Kickstarter page, hit that eye to see what the final components look like. One thing, I was surprised my prototype rule book doesn't have a page or two to vote in the back to go into more detail. Because that's the thing. Having played this now, I want to know more detail about cytoplasm and, you know, messenger RNA and, and what are, you know, what are the differences? between a, a protein hormone and a steroid hormone and all these things that I've been doing because I'm interested, I'm engaged, I'm drawn in. I mean, this is such a wonderful tool for classrooms or for families who are trying to get you know uh, kids engaged and involved in the sciences in a really tactile, hands-on way because kids feel like they've done this themselves. Although, like I said, I mean, it was charming to me in Gen 2 as full-grown adults. Um, now, I, one thing I should say though is, uh, you know, when I, I mentioned family and gateway, that's definitely what this game is. It is a very, very light introduction to worker placement. It, um, this is lighter than Stone Age or, uh, or Lords of Waterdeep, for example. It's incredibly fast, really, really smooth playing. Um, and, you know, maybe, you know, because you know, every turn, you know, well, depending on how many players, you might have anywhere from two to four workers, and you just zip by really quick. You have specific goals, both your publicly declared ones and your secret ones you have in your hand that you're trying to do and you're just trying to get as much done as fast as you can um, you know racing against everybody else and it works but really about the, the main problem Jen I had with this is it's less than ideal as a two-player game. I'm really thinking the more people you have around the table the better this is going to be for a few reasons. One, the receptors are really, really cool because, hey, once I have made a steroid hormone receptor, every time anybody around the table makes uh, steroids, I score points for it. And it could very well be that early on somebody else declared, yeah, you know, I, I took the uh, bonus to make steroids. So I know that that's what that player is going to want to do. So I want to get this built so I can score points off of them. And if there were three or four or five players, that's likely to happen. But in a two-player game, uh-uh. As soon as you make this... I am done making steroid hormones because all I'm doing is just feeding you points. Um, you know, the, the two points I get for my bonus are invalidated by the two points you get for me making them, and it just kind of stalls to a halt. There's just a fundamental. There's a lot less synergy between players. There's a lot less tension. Uh, the board is pretty wide open because if you had a lot of players all trying to synthesize, you know, all these different hormones at once, you might run into, um, you know, some stop gaps. In fact, if there are you know, um, two people over here at the uh, smooth ER and somebody else wants to come in, they end up kicking one of the people out. They end up losing their progress. In a two-player game, that's very, very, very unlikely to happen because there's plenty of room to go around. And what Jen and I found is, oh, well, you know, now there are two players, well, I'll tend to, you know, uh, gravitate towards the rough ER, you'll gravitate towards the smooth ER or the, the, uh, the enzymes, and there's just not that much competition. You know, the uh, competition for to seeing who has the most um, who's done the most detoxification again with more players where you're talking about you know there's a big spread between eight points and zero points for whoever comes in last that's a big deal but in a two-player game whoever does the most gets six points the other one gets three so there's just a three-point bonus and you know I could work really hard do a lot of detoxification throughout the whole game and then near the end you just do one and you score half the points I did again as a two-player game, I think, for the most part, the balance is a little bit off on everything. It strikes me as very strange that in a two-player game, you're specifically supposed to put four goals out. Because that just means, oh, I'll take two goals, and you'll take two goals, so we can both get the full bonus. There should really only be three goals out there, so there's more of a rush to grab the bonus for getting them first. You know, uh, repeatedly throughout, um, the two-player just seems 
It just needs a little bit more tweaking, a little bit more balancing to make it as tight and interesting and dynamic as it would be for higher player counts. So, but at higher player counts, I think this is going to be a lot more fun as you start raking in points off of the work other people do. Um, there, there's a lot more tension. Uh, you know, it, the uh, the Google apparatus choke point as everybody's trying to generate stuff at the same time. And also, I haven't talked about this yet, but there is the virus expansion that comes in the game as well. And this is a really interesting expansion. One reason it's interesting is because it doesn't work for two players at all. You have to have at least three players to be able to use the virus expansion. Although I've read, the, so I haven't played it, but I've read the rules and I don't understand why. With a little bit of tweaking, it would work with two players. But uh, say lobby, so you need at least three players. And it's interesting, it adds a little bit of cutthroat nature to the game because what happens is, if you're playing with the virus expansion, that introduces Ebola, influenza, and the rhinovirus. Three different viruses. Um, so additional cards get put into the event deck, additional cards get put into the cell component deck, and additional goals come out that are all related to the viruses. When a virus event comes out, everybody potentially gets hit by it. Everybody looks to see how many antibodies they have developed for the viruses, and that determines how many dice they're going to roll. Uh, the game comes with some virus dice. Oh, I don't see where they are right now. But anyway, everybody rolls the dice, adds their base antibodies to it, and whoever rolls the highest fights off the flu the best and gets a bunch of free resources. And whoever comes in second gets fights off the, the virus uh, not quite as well, gets some resources. Whoever comes in last actually ends up losing resources because they did the worst. They, the virus knocked them out for the longest. So, and after the virus is over, everybody has the option to spend some ATP to raise um, you know, their antibodies uh, so that they will be uh, better suited to fight off against it in the future if it comes out again. So, it's a cool idea, but what's really interesting is the virus cards can occasionally come out here on the board, and if somebody chooses them, that's a, basically an attack, because that means that player who buys it gets to immediately, before anything else happens, spend ATP to um, you know, basically increase their immunity to the virus, then every other player loses a point across the board. So the more players you have, the more impactful it is, then everybody has to fight the virus. And chances are, the player who bought it, they you know got the chance to boost themselves beforehand. So they're probably going to come out on top, and they'll get a bunch of resources, and somebody else is going to lose resources. So um, you know, with, with the viruses in the game, first player becomes even more important, because you don't want to be on the receiving end of somebody else kicking off a virus, and they got to have an inoculation that you did not. Um, so if you're looking for a game that has a little bit more in-your-face um, you know, denial, attacky type stuff, not direct, but indirect attacky stuff, you might want to throw the virus thing in. Although again, you have to have at least three players to do it because for whatever reason, the design of cytosis, it, don't get me wrong, it works as a two player game. Jen and I definitely enjoyed it, but the whole time we were playing, because of the way things tend to shake out, we just kept thinking, man, just with one more player, this would be so much more interesting because there'd be more competition for the for first dibs on the goals, there would be more competition for the limited choke points on the board, and there would be more opportunities for synergy between players who have done receptors versus players who are trying to do the actual hormones that those receptors plug into. So, um, I, you know, I, I definitely think it's a sharp game. It's a it's a smooth, fast playing game. It looks great, and its number one thing, as I said right up front, still stands. It is a wonderfully themed game that really brings this hidden universe to life. That lives inside all of us, and I think really fires the imagination and wants. And you know, I, I want to learn more about it. I want the rule book to actually have a lot more information, uh, you know, about what goes on here. I'm sure it will because this is actually designed by a scientist. Um, I, so. And the nice thing is, while it has this kind of educational bent, it is still a solid, fun game. It is not one of those edutainment titles that focuses more on the education and less on the entertainment. This is an entertaining game. Really, my only complaint is, as a two-player game, it's less than ideal. This is a game where you want the whole family to play together or a bunch of kids in the classroom to all play together because that's when it's going to really... It's, re it's really going to come alive. And that, folks, is Cytosis, a cell biology game. And thanks for watching. Now, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, as always, please let me know. Apologies for any goofs I made, but hope you have a pretty good idea of what it feels like to play. And that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. Have a very, very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye-bye.